The design of a tension member involves finding a member with adequate gross and net areas. Tension members need to have enough gross cross-sectional area for strength in yielding and enough effective area for strength in fracture. In addition to this, the slenderness effect should also be considered. Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering and in this video we will learn that how to design the tension members and to select the advocate section to carry the load safely. I have been given a question which states that select an ST shape to be used as a 20 feet long tension member to resist the following service loads that is the dead load is 35 kips, live load is 120 kips and snow load is 70 kips. The connection is through the flange with uh, three 3 by 4 inch diameter bolts in each line. We have to use uh, A572 grade 50 steel and we have to use both the methods that is the LRFD as well as the AST. So first uh, we will see what is given in the question. We have been given dead load. This is equal to 35 kips. Live load is equal to 120 kips and this snow load this is equal to 70 kips. So first we will consider the LRFD and the first thing which we will do is that we will find the ultimate load. So ultimate load for this load combination is equal to that is 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load plus 0.5 times the snow load. This will give us the ultimate load equal to 269 kips. After that we will uh, see that we have been using that A572 grade 50 steel uh, for this steel we have yield strength equal to 50 ksi and the ultimate strength is equal to 65 ksi uh, so to design the tension member first we will uh, find the required gross uh, cross sectional area so this required gross sectional area is given by the ultimate load divided by 0 0.9 times the yield strength so this is equal to 269 divided by 0 0.9 times 50 which is equal to 5.98 inch square. Then we will find the required effective area. This is equal to the ultimate load divided by 0 0.75 times the ultimate strength. So this is equal to 269 divided by 0 0.75 into 65 which is equal to 5.52 inch square. After that the required radius of uh, gyration this is equal to L divided by 300 since our member is 20 feet long so this is 20 into 12 divided by 300 which is equal to 0 0.8 inch. After getting the required gross uh, area, required effective area and required radius of uh, gyration we will use the steel construction uh, table to find the advocate section. Since we have to select an ST shape so we will use the table uh, 1 to 10 of this ST shapes and uh, we will select the section which has the area slightly more than the required gross area. So here we have two choices that is ST 10 into 33 and ST 9 into 27.35. So we will try both the sections and find which one is the most economical. So first let us try ST 10 into 33. So for this ST10 into 33, we can see that its gross cross sectional area is equal to 9.7 inch square, which is greater than the required cross sectional area, which is 5.98 inch square. So this is okay. Uh, its uh, flange thickness is equal to 0 0.795 inch. Its minimum radius of gyration, this is equal to 1.19 inch, which is also greater than the required minimum radius of gyration, which is 0 0.8 inch. So this is also okay. After that, we will find the net area. This net area is equal to gross area minus number of times the whole diameter into the flange thickness. So our gross area is 9.7. Since we, our bolts are in two lines, so uh, this number of bolts are 2 and the diameter of bolt is 3 by 4 inch so diameter of hole will be 3 by 4 plus 1 by 8 and the thickness of flange is 0 0.795 inch so this gives us the net area equal to 8.31 inch square. The breadth of the flange of this section is equal to 6.26 inch which is less than the 2 by 3 times D. This D is the depth of the section from this uh, from which this T section is cut off. 
so st10 into 33 is cut off from st20 into 66 so for this section d is equal to 20 inch since this breadth of flange this is less than 2 by 3 times d so here k7 of aisc table uh, d 3.1 applies which gives us the shear lag factor equal to 0 0.85 so effective area this is equal to shear lag factor times the net area so it is equal to 0 0.85 into 8.31 which is equal to 7.064 in square which is also greater than the required effective area which is 5.52 in square so this is okay so this section that is st10 into 33 satisfies uh, our conditions or you can say that it is safe to carry the loads after that let us try the next section which is st9 into 27.35 so this has a gross area equal to 8.02 inch square which is also greater than the required gross area that is 5.98 inch square so this is okay its thickness of flange is 0 0.691 inch its minimum radius of gyration is 1.14 inch this is also okay and its net area this is equal to 8.02 minus 2 times 3 by 4 plus 1 by 8 times 0 0.691 which is equal to 6.81 inch square again its breadth of flange is 6 inch which is less than 2 by 3 times d where this d is the depth of section from which d was cut here st9 into 27.35 is cut off from s18 into 54.7 so its d is 18 inch since this breadth of flange is less than 2 by 3 d uh, again the case 7 of aic table d 3.1 applies it means the shear lag factor is equal to 0 0.85 this gives us the uh, effective area equal to uh, 0 0.85 times the net area which is 6.81 which is equal to 5.79 in square this is greater than the required uh, effective area which is 5.52 inch square so this is uh, safe to carry the loads we can see that both st10 into 33 and st9 into 27.35 are advocate to carry the uh, given load safely and out of which this st9 into 27.35 is more economical so we will use this st9 into 27.35 to carry the loads now let us try the same question in ASD. So our dead loads is 35 kips, our live load is 120 kips, and our snow load is 70 kips. Again, this allowable load, this is either given by D plus L, which is 35 plus 120, which is 155 kips, or it is uh, given equal to D plus 0.75L plus 0.75S, which is equal to 177 point. 5 kips we can see that out of the two the large one is one is 177.5 kips so we will use this that's our allowable load is equal to 177.5 kips after that we will again find the required gross area this is equal to allowable load divided by 0 0.6 times this yield strength so this is equal to 177.5 divided by 0 0.6 into 50 this is equal to 5.92 in square its uh, required effective area this is equal to allowable load divided by 0 0.5 times the ultimate strength so this is equal to 177.5 divided by 0 0.5 times this 65 which is equal to 5.46 inch square uh, its required radius of gyration is l by 300 so this is equal to 0 0.8 inch because our length of member is 20 feet after that we will again try this st9 into 27.35 since this uh, satisfied the condition in lrft so let's check will it satisfy in the asd method so its gross area this is equal to 8.02 inch square which is again greater than the required gross area so this is okay after that thickness of flange is 0.691 inch and its minimum radius of gyration is 1.14 inch which is greater than the required minimum radius of gyration this is also satisfactory after that the net area this is given by the gross cross sectional area minus number of times the diameter of holes times the flange thickness so this is equal to 6.81 inch square 
since its breadth of flange is less than 2 by 3 times d where this d is the depth of section from which t was cut so here st9 into 27.35 is cut off from s18 into 54.7 so it means the depth of section is 18 inch since this bf this is less than 2 by 3 times d so we will use the case of the aisc table d3.1 this gives us the shear like factor equal to 0 0.85 this effective area is equal to the shear like factor times the net area so this is equal to 0 0.85 times 6.81 which is equal to 5.79 in square this is greater than the required effective area so this is also okay so we will use this st9 into 27.35 to carry the given loads now let us try a different case in this case we have to select a single angle tension member of a36 steel to resist the following service loads that is the dead load is 45 kips live load is 105 kips wind load is 40 kips this member will be connected through one leg with one inch diameter bolts in two lines and there will be four bolts in each line this member is also 20 feet long we have to use both the methods that is the lrft as well as the ast so our dead load is equal to 45 kips live load is 105 kips wind load is 40 kips so for lrft ultimate load is given by that is the 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load which is equal to 1.2 times 45 plus 1.6 times 105 which is equal to 222 kips also ultimate load is given by 1.2 times dead load plus 1.0 uh, times the weight load plus 0 0.5 times the live load this is equal to 1.2 times 45 plus 1 into 40 plus 0 0.5 into 105 which is equal to 146.5 kips out of the two cases the first one is the larger so we will use our ultimate load as 222 kips since uh, we are using a36 uh, steel for which yield strength is 36 ksi and ultimate strength is equal to 58 ksi again we will first find the required gross area so this is equal to ultimate load divided by the 0 0.9 times the yield strength this is equal to 222 divided by 0 0.9 times 36 which is equal to 6.85 inch square required effective area is ultimate load divided by 0 0.75 times the ultimate strength which is equal to 222 divided by 0 0.75 times 58 which is equal to 5.1 inch square this uh, required radius of gyration is l by 300 l is 20 feet so it will be uh, 20 into 12 divided by 300 which is equal to 0 0.8 inch so first uh, we will use this uh, l8 into 6 into 9 by 16 it's gross area is equal to 7.61 inch square this is greater than the required gross area 6.85 inch square so this is okay its minimum radius of gyration is also greater than the required minimum radius of gyration this is also okay and its net area this is uh, gross area minus number of times the hole diameter times the thickness of the angle so this is equal to 7.61 since we have uh, two lines of bolts so n will be two diameter of bolt is one so diameter of uh, hole will be diameter of bolt plus one by eight so this is one plus one by eight and the thickness of this angle is nine by sixteen this gives us the net area equal to 6.34 inch square since uh, bolts are in two lines and in each line there are four bolts so whenever angle is connected by four or more bolts in uh, one line uh, so from case 8 of AIC table D3.1 shear like factor is equal to 0 0.8 this gives us the effective area as uh, 0 0.8 times the net area which is 
so effective area is equal to 5.07 inch square we can see that this is less than the required net uh, required effective area which is 5.1 inch square so this is not okay and this uh, angle is not adequate to carry the load safely so let us try a different section let us now try l8 into 6 into 5 by 8 for this uh, angle gross area is equal to 8.41 which is greater than the required gross area minimum radius of gyration is 1.29 inch which is greater than the required minimum radius of gyration net area is equal to gross area minus number of times the whole diameter times the thickness of angle which is equal to 7.004 inch square and uh, again we have four uh, four bolts in each bolt line so shear like factor is equal to 0 0.8 so this gives us the effective area as 0 0.8 times the net area so it is 0 0.8 times uh, 7.004 which is equal to 5.6 inch square this time it is greater than the required effective area so this is okay it means this section is uh, satisfactory to carry the load safely so we will use this L8 into 6 into 5 by 8 to carry the loads. Now let us try this question in AST. So again the dead load is equal to 45 kips. Live load is 105 kips and this wind load is 40 kips. Allowable load is given by dead load plus live load. This is equal to 45 plus 105 which is equal to 150 kips or uh, dead load allowable load is dead load plus 0 0.75 times the live load plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 into wind load this is equal to 45 plus 0 0.75 times 105 plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 into 40 which is equal to 141.75 kips so out of two first one is the larger so we will use our allowable load equal to 150 kips after that the required gross area this is equal to uh, allowable load divided by 0 0.6 times the yield strength this is equal to 150 divided by 0 0.6 into 36 which is 6.94 inch square required effective area this is equal to allowable load divided by 0 0.5 times the ultimate uh, strength so this is equal to 150 divided by 0 0.5 times 58 which is equal to 5.17 inch square this uh, required radius of gyration this is equal to length of member divided by 300 which is equal to 0 0.8 inch so we will try l8 into 8 into 1 by 2 this has a gross area equal to 7.84 inch square which is greater than the required gross area its minimum radius of gyration is 1.59 inch this is also greater than the required minimum radius gyration and its net area is equal to gross area minus uh, number of bolts into whole diameter into thickness of this angle so this is equal to 7.84 minus 2 into 1 plus 1 by 8 into 1 by 2 this is equal to 6.72 inch square again there are four bolts in each line so case 8 of AIC table d3.1 applies that is the shear like factor is equal to 0 0.8 this gives us the required this gives us the effective area equal to shear like factor times the net area which is 0 0.8 times 6.72 this is equal to 5.38 in square which is greater than the required effective area so this is okay it means this member or this angle section is safe to carry the loads so this is how you can uh, design the tension member to carry the load safely i tried my best to present this topic in as simple and clear language as i can and i hope you now fully understand how to design the tension members if you find this video helpful like this video subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends thanks for watching and stay tuned